somewhere deep within my closet rests a beast which hasn't seen the light of day for years upon years. Alright, so here's the story. I'm going back to Norway in just about a week and a crazy Norwegian fan has uh, prompted me to buy this thing for a ridiculous sum of money uh, and I'm more than glad to oblige but in order to be able to do that we need to give this guy a bit of a once over because the uh, last time I tried using it uh, the bias was a bit off and I'm figuring it's just been sitting for so long that the potentiometers have gotten a bit wonky so hopefully there's not going to be anything more to it than taking it apart and uh, checking the bias current Alright, so I usually connect stuff I've detested beforehand, but in this case, uh, since I know it was acting up and I don't want to risk exploding it, uh, since it's eating 12 brand new, really expensive 8 bit transistors, uh, I'm just going to measure the uh, bias pots. Uh, they're 1k pots, uh, this side has the original one, this side is, uh, has it replaced since I believe it was exploded. Uh, but I do believe also both sides were acting up, so there's a 1k pot, which is uh, less than 1k, which uh, is fine. We've got uh, two of the left side pins connected together, so it's just a uh, pretty much variable resistor, and that's just measuring just fine. It's uh, set to just under halfway, and it's measuring 400 ohms, so that's pretty much perfect. We should expect similar results on this one, but I'm ex kind of suspecting that's not going to be the case. So let's see. That's 600 ohms. Hmm, curious. It measures just fine. So, let's power this thing on and see how much power it draws. Alright, I believe the normal uh, idle power consumption is about 100 watts just above on this thing. That's just out of memory. Uh, and I did just check the service manual and the bias measurement, which you're taking a couple of terminals on the PCB there, is supposed to be 10 millivolts, and we're measuring millivolts DC of a meter there. So uh, let's see, above all, if the brake is going to handle this, because I believe this is connected to my UPS and we might get blackout. Uh, but above all, if the uh, power consumption and bias currents are correct. Here we go. One hundred and seventy watts. One hundred and eighty. Yeah, this is uh, considerably higher than it's supposed to be, if I recall correctly. Uh, we are having a very low bias current on the, that channel, so that probably means the right-hand channel is uh, very toasty at the moment. Let's uh, measure to confirm. And yes, indeed, one hundred and sixty millivolts. That is way too much bias so let's uh, turn this toaster off and uh, give the potentiometer a bit of a wiggle to make sure it's not oxidized uh, and uh, then readjust properly so we are going to uh, have to take the bias down before we do the uh, initial adjustment and uh, then we will allow the amplifier to warm up with a reasonable amount of bias on both channels uh, before doing the final uh, 10 millivolts adjustment so we'll just give this a little bit of a wiggle, making sure to note its rough position. Go okay, from end to end a few times. I'll I'll do for proper and put some alcohol in there as well. That never hurts. So let's see what our bias has become. Ah, a lot better. And our idle pay consumption is now 4 to 6 watts, which is uh, considerably better. So now I feel comfortable just nudging this while the amplifier is on. And this seems to be tracking quite well, so I don't think we have any a problem with like a burnt out potentiometer or anything. We can turn it up and down just fine. So I'm going to let this sit with like. Let's see if the, the bar is going to rise or fall. Probably fall as temperature rises. Yeah. So I'll make it 
a bit higher than it's supposed to, like 12, 13. And uh, I'm gonna let this stabilize and I'll be back to do the final adjustment. All right, quick correction on that. The bias is actually rising as the temperature rises. So I readjusted it to be slightly below 10 millivolts just to give us the best chances at one-shotting it. Well, all right, I noticed while the amplifier was sitting around that it was uh, actually starts to drift a bit on the current on this channel. And if I go ahead and give this potentiometer a bit of a twirl, we will come across a point Oh, this is going to be gone now, just because I saw it earlier. Yeah, it's gone now. But uh, this potentiometer was being rather dicky in a certain spot. It's probably worn down because I've been fiddling with it. But uh, yeah, it's enough for me to want to replace that potentiometer. So, uh, I have measured, since the uh, original potentiometer is such a large unit, uh, I was afraid that... Uh, there would be a rather high voltage and high power associated with it uh, but if we just measure the voltage across the pot we will see there's just one volt and it's a 1k pot so you can pretty much use any potentiometer without running into issues uh, and i happen to have a couple of brand new ones i purchased for my sx950 pioneer restoration uh, which in the, the, the wrong uh, capsule they're going to be a bit dicky to main, but uh, they're good enough. Uh, at least they're going to be brand new and not dicky. These are like rather expensive bonus pots, which uh, performed excellent in the Pioneer. So I'm going to dismount this channel and uh, just put a new pot in there, just so that I don't sell a faulty unit. I also noticed that uh, one of the bulbs had burnt out, so I've ordered a set of new bulbs from Germany. Uh, here's to hoping they arrive before I have to get going with this thing. Fingers crossed. So, uh, this procedure, thankfully, I think I can cheat uh, a bit. Uh, normally to solder anything, you'd of course have to dismount the whole amplifier module, then take out the PCB, which requires uh, the redoing a bunch of solder, soldered on connectors. But for the bias pot, uh, I can actually very easily squeeze my soldering iron in there. So I'm thinking I'm just uh, gonna use solder brake to suck the solder off and then uh, reinstall the potentiometer uh, without taking anything apart at all. And the access is so good, you can see I can easily move a soldering iron around there, but uh, I think it's going to be a decent quality repair. And we'll just get some flux down in there. And some of a braid, just good measure. Let's get this pot out of there. There we go. All loose. Eight chickens. So it seems that uh, my choice in bias pot for the original repair of this thing wasn't particularly good. This is a cheap potentiometer. So let's see if we can just uh, figure out what's gone wrong in there. Perhaps it's gotten burnt or wonky in some other way. There she comes. How does she look? Well, that actually looks pretty okay to me. No obvious signs of uh, issues at all, so it just has to be uh, the fact that it's a rather cheap potentiometer with a copper spring, which is uh, just oxidized over time, because that's... Yeah, I'd rather see that gold plated as it uh, assuredly is in the more expensive potentiometer. That's probably what happened. This got oxidized and caused a bad connection. So the new pot actually fits rather well with its original pin out if you just stick it on like so. But that would make adjustment almost impossible due to the aluminium plate there. So I'm going to try and fit it at a bit of an angle like so uh, to get it to face upwards a bit. Enabling bias adjustment. 
such a luxurious feature. There we go, all three pins protruding and while you can't see it, the potentiometer is at an angle which allows for adjustment. So I'm just going to solder that in and we'll be good to go. Alright, so after meticulously mounting, cleaning and finalising that potentiometer, I went on to test measure it in order to preserve the bias to a reasonable level by adjusting the pot to about 400 ohms, uh, and I realised that I'd made it a 100 ohm pot instead of a 1k one. So, uh, I've now entirely replaced that, we're using a 1k 10 turn pot because that's the best thing I've got. At least we'll be able to very accurately set for buyers now. So, with this pot I actually managed to trim it into about 400 ohms as intended, uh, and we should have a reasonably sane bias now, it shouldn't be zero, it shouldn't be uh, output smokingly too high, so now let's give it a go, click the switch and see what happens. And that's quite spot on, 7.5 millivolts across the, the test terminals and we should be able to adjust that as well. Yes indeed. Perfect, so now to let this properly settle and adjust it with a working new pot. Alright, I now let the amplifier sit for pretty much the entire day, it is many hours later and the bias on both channels has stabilised to something very close to 10 millivolts. So I'm quite happy with that, the only minor complaint I can really see uh, while messing around is that we've got a 23 and a half millivolt DC offset on one of the channels uh, below 10 on the other but that's well within spec I believe it's specified to below 100 millivolts so uh, that's it the uh, bias part is fixed the amplifier should now be performing well so I've powered off the distortion meter and uh, I'm gonna give it a quick uh, one kilohertz test just to confirm that we don't have any weird distortion going on and then I'm ready to ship it out. Alright so I've rigged up a tester we're doing uh, uh, 10 times 100 hertz one kilohertz at my reference level of 0.775 volts we're currently measuring the input level so let's just uh, start uh, turning off the volume we'll be using the attenuator on the a power amplifier, going to do one channel at a time since my load cannot handle both. Uh, and we'll just uh, do a couple of checks. Let's start with uh, 1 watt, which is about 2.83 volts. 8. That's close enough. And our distortion is rather low. 0.023%, which is a very good result for an amplifier in this power range. Very good indeed, actually. Let's do uh, uh, 10 watts, about 10 volts. That's about 10 volts. And we've got less than 0.03% distortion, a bit lower, 0 0.016, there about. Looking good. Let's do like uh, 50 watts or 20 volts. Yeah, that's somewhere around 50 volts, uh, 50 watts. And we've dropped down to 0.005% distortion. And I think we're going to have to raise the input signal a bit to get to the rated power. Let's do like a hundred watts, and that should be about a hundred watts. Twenty-eight volts. Yeah, less than point. Wow. <laughs> so at one hundred watts into eight ohms, we have got. Is that even correct? Yeah, that is a correct measurement. We have got zero point double o one three percent distortion. That is a rather impressive insult, uh, insult result, I must say. So now I'm just going to have to turn the volume up on the signal generator a bit because you need more than 
uh, 0.775 to get this up to its rated power output of 240 watts per channel and that is 43.8 volts out we will put a range to 100 volts full scale attenuator at maximum and just to turn it up until we get to 43 that's 43 distortion is 0.0024% which is very very good let's see uh, when we start clipping at uh, let's say more than 1% there we go that's clipping at uh, 47 and a half volts which equals uh, about 280 watts or so with one channel driven. So I'd say that's a very good result as far as power is concerned on that channel. Uh, let's uh, check the noise floor and uh, we will be done. So I'll just turn the signal gen off. Uh, attenuator at minimum. Uh, measure the noise at uh, there and we have got uh, very little noise indeed minus that's going to be minus 80 minus 70 about minus 78 decibel volts on that channel which is quite good that's perfectly acceptable for an amplifier well very good for an amplifier this size I do believe this thing has a bit of an issue with picking up mains hum though if we yeah if we turn it up the attenuator up we do pick up some mains hum coupling from the transformer we can see that because that enable the 400 hertz high pass which if takes away all the 50 hertz hum uh, we get a very much a very much improved noise figure but uh, all in all the actual power amplifier module is working absolutely perfectly let's say layer tissue with this particular model so Right channel gets a perfect pass on all accounts. Uh, let's uh, check the left channel and uh, we'll be on our way. All right, left channel, let's do the same test. So we've got the exact same setup, 0.775 volts reference, and we will test for distortion at one watt output, which is 2.83 volts. That's close enough. And we have got 0.0135%, which is absolutely within spec. Let's do 10 watts equaling to about 10-ish volts out. 10 volts full scale, that's close enough to 10 watts. We have got about 0.009% distortion, perfect result. Uh, let's just uh, do whatever maximum there is. That is like uh, 100 watts ish. And we have got 0.002% distortion. Absolutely perfect. Orders of magnitude within spec. So let's adjust for maximum power out for 240 watts per channel which is about, what was it, 43 volts, 240, 43.82 volts, so almost 44, as with two channels driven, so with one channel driven, we can just go for spot on 44, and it's going to perform within spec, I promise you. And indeed, we have a good 0.0235%, absolutely perfect, let's turn it up until it clips at 1%, which is going to probably going to be about the same as the up channel. There we go. Clipping at 1%. At 48 volts, which is uh, about 280, 290-ish watts. Absolutely perfect result. Check the noise level, turn the signal gen off. All the way off. We will measure the input level at idle and we have got uh, minus 78 db volts 
absolutely good results. I probably have the same issue with 50 hertz pickup if we now enable the low pass filter there. Yeah, it's performing, this, the left channel is performing a bit better, has a bit less 50 hertz pickup, but uh, uh, all in all, it has a bit of a 50 hertz pickup issue. Uh, no biggie, the amplifier module itself is working just fine. Again, that is an issue with how the wires are rated around this giant big transformer in here. It's hard to avoid some EMI. But all in all, good result. This amplifier is good to go. I am happy to call this according to the old performance report I did on it like about a year ago, perhaps when I, when I was fixing some of an issue on it. <sighs> what relief! P2200 living again and it's soon gonna be leaving my shop for good. <sighs> and there she sits, ready to take on new challenges in a foreign land. I can't say I'm not a bit saddened to see this one go. After all it is uh, the first real project which brought any kind of significant views to this channel back in 2013 shot with a compact camera but alas I do admit to not giving her the love she has uh, longed for and deserved for all these years and I do know that the new owner is going to provide that so I'll have to say thank you for watching cheerio